Guitar and Excel, Spreadsheet Creation Mapping the Path to Fretboard Enlightenment, Part Number 11. Get ready and don't fret. Remember, the board's fretted, so you don't have to be. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if using a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, we got a bunch of tabs down below, including the example tab, which is the end result, the final product, in essence, answer key, the starting points corresponding to the video presentations as we work through the long practice problem, the blank tab, representing the blank worksheet we started on and are continuing with at this time. Qu quick recap of what we have done thus far. We started out listing the musical alphabet in uh, a column format, A, and then the sharps and flats being lowercase a, b, and then b, c, c sharp, or d flat, d, uh, d sharp, or e flat, e, f, uh, F sharp or G flat, G, and then G sharp or A flat, then it starts over again. We then gave the numbers related to it, which I think are both useful for a memorization technique as well as for our Excel. We combined them together. We created the fretboard, both in terms of just numbers, which is easier and cleaner to look at if we can see the notes in terms of numbers, and with the numbers and the letters, which is primarily what we will be working with when we start to use our worksheet. We then created the relative scales, picking the notes from the musical alphabet, starting with the C or four note, the four note is a C <laughs> scale, and using our formula of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, to then construct the notes that will be in place. We, we constructed it and repeated the pattern multiple times. You can imagine it going out into infinity to help us build our worksheet which now is related to the C major. It will give us the notes, so relative positions in the scale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the notes in the scale four, five, and you can see it down here, it might be easier, four C, six D, eight E, and so on. So C, D, E, F, G, A, uh, B. And then we have also the Roman numerals, which will tell us if we're constructing a major or minor scale pretty quickly. We've got our circle here, which gives us this information in a never ending circle, which is easier to see oftentimes than to imagine, say like a piano going on forever, or this column in a linear fashion, looking at it in a circle is useful. Then we use that to create the relative minor, which we can call the Aeolian. We then thought about the, uh, the Dorian, and now we're just going to continue on with the modes. So we just want to add the rest of the modes now that we have this in place. So if I go back to the major over here, note that when we're thinking about the modes, the minor is just a mode, right? It's an Aeolian mode. It's taking uh, the six and, and making the minor from it. Let's go down here to see it. So if I'm in C, we took the six, we made the minor. Then we did the same with the D, and that's a Dorian. So now I'm going to create the, the related Phrygian, which means I'm just going to take this uh, three note and use it as the one note and do the same thing we did with the Dorian and with the minor. So to do that, we should be able to just copy the Dorian, hopefully now. So I'm going to put my cursor in the skinny over here and just go on over to the CW, uh, control C, and then I'm going to paste that in CX, right click and uh, paste. And then hopefully all we need to change is this starting note. I'm going to say it's going to be relative. I'm going to go all the way back to the major. And I'm going back to the major and say now we're starting on the, the uh, note of it's going to be the eight, the three note. We're starting on the three note because we're looking at Phrygian. So I'm going to say there's the eight, pulling that in. And so there we have it. And so this is, that looks unusual because I have to delete everything below this and then I'm just going to copy it down. So I'm going to copy this down until it repeats, copying it down till it repeats six, uh, seven, eight and or six, eight. And then I'm going to say, then this one is going to equal, or let's do it up here. This eight is going to equal this pattern and the pattern just repeats from there. So I should be able to copy this all the way down and the pattern will just repeat. 
and that looks good. Now these distances should populate properly automatically. Remember, this is relative to the C major. This is the Phrygian relative to C major. So the C major is here. If I started there, I get my familiar pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. But now I'm just starting on this note. So now I've get the, the uh, half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, and that's gonna be my pattern for the Phrygian. So then I'm gonna type in up top, I'm just gonna change the name. I'm gonna say this is gonna be the Phrygian, Phrygian. And obviously part of the music theory that is difficult is just remembering these Greek names, which are, aren't, don't exactly roll off the tongue for at least English speakers, you know, but that's part of the, the, you know, you sound fancy when you do say Phrygian. And so that's quite impressive, which is, you know, that's useful, I guess. And, and so there we have that. So now we're starting, I think everything else is populating properly. So these are pulling over properly now, just like we saw last time. And down here, I think everything is pulling over. The, the lookups are pulling over uh, properly. And then if I look at at the major notes over here, if I go up back to A, to major, then the one, four, five in the major is that C, F, and G, which should have capital letters. So let's see if that's the case over here. So we had the C, uh, so hold on a second. Something isn't quite right with that. Oh no, the C is over here. There's this capital F, and then G. So that looks like it, everything looks like it's pulling over properly. And now we're just starting with an E being the one uh, with, with a lower case. So we would be building a minor chord around it and so on and so forth. So same concept. Let's just do the same concept now to the Lydian. So this looks like it's, we have everything working like it should. So I'm going to copy this skinny, go on over to the end here and control C. And let's do the same thing and just paste it in DV, control V. And so now we're doing the same thing here, but now we want to start on my starting note. So I'm going to just delete this whole column this time. I'll just delete this. I'm going to re-implement this column. This is going to be equal to, I'm going all the way back to the major. I'm going to go back to the major way over here. And we're now on, we want this to be the nine. So now we're going to do the same thing but we're starting with this note. Maybe I should do it from where I, where I was doing it before to be consistent. So we're over here and now we're doing it from the nine, which is the four note over here. I think it's actually easier to see in the circle, but so I don't think it would matter if I took either one, but here it is. We'll take the nine, boom. Actually, it would matter because I have to copy it down. And then I'm going to copy this down. Boom. I see where it repeats right there. And I'm just going to say this equals the one above it. So then I can then copy that pattern down and all the relative cells will move down nicely. Same pattern we have seen in the past. So that looks good. And then again, if I look at the relative pattern to the C, there's my whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. But now the pattern, if I start on the F is, ha is whole, 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 half, whole, whole, uh, half. <laughs> And then this looks like it's populating. So I've got the name. So this is uh, the nine or F for the Phrygian and the Roman numerals. I'm going to assume are populating properly. I know there's the C, uh, there's the G, there's the F are capitalized and the B was the diminished. So that look, it looks like it's doing what we want. So let's do it for the next one. Uh, actually, I need to change the name. This isn't Phrygian. This is, uh, this is Lydian. Lydian, and this is the four note note from the relative major. So it's the four note from uh, the relative major scale. So if someone says they're playing in Lydian, then it's useful to be able to think about if you can envision your your circle of fifths over here and say, all right, it's an I'm an F uh, Lydian that's my one if i was to think of it in terms of lydian then where's the c in relation to it 
it's the five, right? So he'd have to say, okay, that's relative to my C. And if you can do that, then that's useful because oftentimes you're able to basically populate the chords if you're thinking about the relative major as opposed to the, the, the Lydian, which is basically just ordering it. So it's useful to do that, especially in the start when you're trying to mess around with these modes. So let's do the next one now. So the next one is going to be Mixolydian. So we'll do the Mixolydian same way. Mixolid, we'll take the skinny all the way out to here. And I'm gonna copy that and paste that in ET. ET, phoning it home at this point because it's so easy. We've got the pattern down. We're gonna call this Mixolydian, Mixolydian. And I'm gonna say this is the fifth uh, note of the relative major that's and then we're going to change these notes then so i'm going to say this is going to be delete this stuff and all i have to do is change that first note equals back to the major going all the way to the left to the majors back to the majors back to the majors we were in the minors for a while but then we were pulled back up to the majors now if i was to look at it this way we would be looking at this note right if we look at it in terms of the circle relative to the major or you can think about it this way would be the g relative to the c so but i want to pull it up in the table so that i can copy everything down so we're looking at that 11. there's the four to the 11 so i'm going to say enter which is there i'm going to copy it down till it repeats until it repeats and not quite yet so there it is and then i'm going to say this equals the same pattern so I can just repeat that pattern on down the line, on down the line. All right, and then this is gonna be the Mixolydian. So it's the it's the Mixolydian fifth note of uh, the R major. It looks like everything is populating properly, I hope here. So we, we still have the Roman numerals on the C. All right, I think everything is good. And then we have our circle starting at the G, the relative uh, the relative major then is the uh, C over here. Okay. All right. Now let's do it again. Let's do it again. Hopefully the pattern is working here and we can just do it again. We're going to uh, Lokian this time, which always reminds me of like the Loki character. Uh, I don't think it's spelled because there's an R in Loki. Loki I don't know. But I'm going to copy this. And this is the lokian one and we'll paste it here and so let's just change the name first this is going to be lokian and this is going to be the seventh note from our uh, major now this is the weird one so you're prob probably not going to play like a whole song and and lokian right? but uh but so so it's probably not the most useful to actually use it to be constructing a song in but it's useful to understand it conceptually here. So in any case, we're going to say, then I'll delete all the notes on this side and say, all right, now I'm going to say this is going to be equal to going to the left all the way back to the majors. And so there's Dorian, there's the minor, here's the majors. So notice we already did the minor here. That's why we're not doing this minor. It was the Aeolian or minor. So now we're going to this one, which is the three or a B, right? But let's do it in our table. So we're going in our table and we're picking up this one, which is the three, which is the next one would go back to the major. So this is the last one. So we're gonna say enter, copy that down until it repeats, copy it down until it repeats. And it didn't repeat yet. And there it is. And then this one is gonna be equal to that three. And then I'll just copy that down and allow it to repeat on down through the ages okay and then locrian i think everything should be populating with that one so now we have the b as the starting note and its relative major now is the two note if i'm thinking about it in locrian because it was the seven when we we're in the major scale and now and now we're starting with it as one so we're going all the way we're going right back to what was the one if you think about it in major when you look at the circle which is going on going around the circle here. So hopefully everything is populated properly there. Next time, notice what we can do now is, is any of these modes that we're in, I can use this same 
the same fretboard because all the same notes are in it. And then I can just pick the mode that I want to have next to this. So if I want to be over here uh, next to the, to the Phrygian, I can hide all of these cells. And now I can be thinking in terms of Phrygian mode with the same fretboard, which has the same notes in all of these modes because they're all relative to the C major scale. If I unhide this, right click and unhide, I can change all of this hopefully just automatically by this one key note here. If I change this to a six, which is a D, now I should have the D major here. I can go down here. There's the D major. And then I can go to the right and I have the relative modes, the relative minor and the relative Dorian, uh, the relative Phrygian. And so everything should populate and change automatically. So this whole thing is great in and of itself. But we can make it even fancier possibly uh, by saying I would also like to be able to pivot not just from the major here to what's related to the major, but I might want to say what's what's also if I use D as my pivot root note, then what are the other modes with a D in it? I'd like to list all the same modes, but all the ones that have D as the root. And I'm going to try to put those underneath now. So now we're going to construct the same thing, but we're going to go down and we're going to try to be able to then say, like, I can play all the different modes that use D as the root from any of these starting points. And so that, and I'll do it over here too. So I could say, here's the, whatever this is, this is a B. I'll put everything related to it, you know, underneath it, which will have that same root. So now we can, we can kind of try to have a worksheet where we can move around and play the different. Uh, the different modes without having to change the keynote so that we don't have to change all the fretboards and whatnot and we can and we can use multiple kind of fretboards as we're thinking of going from one fretboard to another fretboard which has different scales to it so we can use different colors to represent the different scales so if I go from a C major to a C uh, minor then I'm then I'm not gonna have the same notes but I might want to do that. So I want to have the two fretboards so I can have up top the C major and then down below the C minor, which has the, 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 the different notes involved in it. So that's what we'll start building next time.